Just a few hours until the big event tonight. So we wanted to bring in one of our Texas political experts to bring us that special insight into the candidates and some perspective on what we may see tonight. We've got Scott Braddock of the Quorum Report and the Texas Take podcast. It is fantastic. I've been listening to it all week in preparation for this. Oh, so, Scott, you're after my heart, dear. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Let's talk about the polls. They show Senator mm -hmm. Ted Cruz and Congressman Colin Allred in a tight race. We've mm -hmm. seen this script before. Is it real? Yeah. Well, I can see it being real, and I don't make predictions in these things. I'm almost evangelical about the idea that journalists should not do that. It's the easiest way to lose trust with the audience is tell them something that doesn't happen when it shouldn't be what you're doing in the first place. Um, but I can tell you this. Both campaigns are sure acting like this is a close race. And it's interesting that you have uh, Senator Cruz and Congressman Allred both uh, trying to portray themselves, at least in certain settings, as bipartisan problem solvers. That means they're making a play for the middle. Both of them are. And it'll be interesting to see how much of that they you know, accomplish tonight. Scott, you also say it's interesting that this debate is on a Tuesday. Why does that even matter? Well, historically, in modern Texas politics, and I mean historically since we've had television, uh, the incumbent Republican wants to have the debate on Friday night when high school football is happening, uh, and nobody really notices the debate. The fact that this is the only debate in this race that's going to be televised and, and the only time these guys are going to be on stage together, and Senator Cruz agreed to have it on a Tuesday, means that he wants as many people to see this as possible. His campaign must believe that they still have a lot of work to do to try to grab those independents, and a setting like this is where to do it. If there are strong points for both Allred and Cruz when it comes to tonight's debate, what do you think those are? The strong points, look, I think that uh, you have Senator Cruz out there really trying to mobilize the base of the Republican Party. You heard Gromer Jeffers say a version of that. Uh, this is the kind of literature that they're giving to Republican voters from the Cruz campaign. What does it say? It says Allred's going to tear down the wall. He's going to give kids transgender surgeries uh, and a few other things that really speak to firing up that uh, Republican base. I think that, look, in Texas, until proven otherwise, it's a Republican state and it should vote for the Republican as long as the Republican does his work. But earlier today, you saw that uh, Senator Cruz was basically complaining about national Republican leadership, not helping him with more money, sending it to Texas. He should be able to win it anyway. For Allred, look, it's a real challenge for a Democrat here to convince this electorate that it, that, that person really is a moderate. That's what he's trying to do. And I think you're going to hear Allred talk a lot tonight uh, about his work with congressional Republicans, his reach across the aisle, which he has done many times to try to accomplish things for his constituents. Scott, how much is personality going to play a role? Does that even matter? How the candidates show up for Texas voters? It matters a lot. And uh, look, the, the personality of Senator Cruz, one of his colleagues in the U.S. Senate once said that if being a good senator means being a good co-worker, then Senator Cruz is the kind of guy who comes to the office and microwaves fish. So he's not, he's not the most charismatic guy. Uh, all, on the other side, though, you do have uh, Allred, who uh, some folks have described as it's sort of like watching paint dry as far as his personality. I think it does matter for those independents because those are the folks who do, you know, get into the question of would I want to have a beer with that person? Is it the former NFL star or the guy who uh, is an Ivy League trained attorney? We'll see what November holds. Now, how much of an impact do you think tonight's debate could have on the outcome? And Scott, additionally, what does each candidate need to do tonight? It could have an impact. Look, we're looking at uh, polling that shows, in some cases, a one-point race. I'm, I'm more inclined to believe some of that polling that shows uh, a, a race that's more like three or four points. Uh, but when you're looking for votes on the margins, any moment can make the difference. And since this is the only time these two guys are going to face off, um, it, it probably can have an outsized impact. And look, we are in a completely different political environment from what we were in six months ago. Remember, that's when Joe Biden was going to be the Democratic nominee. Now it's Kamala Harris. All of the polling has completely changed, not just in the presidential race, but in the Senate race and all political races across Texas. Um, and so each of these guys really have to get their shots in tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if it's civil, but at times gets kind of amped up as these guys try to make their points. A little testy. All right, we got Scott oh, yeah. Braddock in from the Quorum Report and Texas Take. Who says the Houston and Dallas contingents can't get along? <laughs> well, it wasn't me, Dia. Thank you. We appreciate you, Scott.